If you're just catching up right now, I've been working on an NFT dashboard on the Zora protocol using the graphs, and it looks like this. So here's the graph. This is my GraphQL API, and I've got this rendered on the page, got all the data from the Zora protocol onto my local host. Uh, and you can see at the moment, some of these images are taking a bit to, to load. Uh, I just want to show you on the contrast what it looks like on the Zora protocol. So this is what it looks like on the Zora protocol. It's got images, they're loading as you scroll down. And my version looks like this. So I can see some images, I got some videos. Uh, and these are all NFTs. They're all hosted on Fleek using IPFS, which I do want to take some time and talk about exactly what Fleek is and what IPFS is. So, so to begin, I just want to talk about Fleek. Fleek is actually a tool that I had an opportunity to chat with on my podcast, Jamstack Radio. Uh, but Fleek is actually out there trying to build a new internet, a new decentralized internet built on Web3 technology. I won't go in great detail on this, but I just want to point out that Fleek what it, it does, it's built on uh, a couple different protocols, but one of them being IPFS, uh, you're able to have decentralized web storage. So if you think of like S3, you have the ability to uh, host images and audio and uh, GIFs and, and video. And you can actually mint all that content as NFTs using ER, <laughs> I'm gonna get this right, ERC721 token. What I did wanna point out is that Fleek actually offers IPFS hosting uh, directly as part of one of their tool sets. I bring that up because the majority of the content that we're gonna be looking at is gonna be coming from fleek.co URLs. So if we're gonna get an image URL and we're gonna get the metadata URL, it's gonna come from fleek.co URLs. There are other solutions out there, so Fleek is not the only one. Uh, but I just wanted to point out that the majority of the ones that we're gonna be messing around is with Fleek. I bring that up because at the moment, we are doing nothing to sort of render these images, uh, absolutely no styling at whatsoever. The only thing we're doing is actually centering them using auto zero uh, and getting them the, the center in the screen, kind of like uh, Instagram uh, scrolling. And what I want to do is actually borrow a bit from another NFT protocol. And uh, this is Foundation. And Foundation is using a really good job of having like a Tailwind-esque uh, UI. So you can need the anticipated loading screen right here. And it's going to load eventually. But one thing you're going to notice is the fact that this stuff takes forever to load. Uh, and we're going to need to, <laughs> it takes forever to load because not only are we trying to render images, we're rendering large images. So there's going to have to be some trickery we have to do to cache that. But we won't get into that in this video. What I do want to just point out is that I want to borrow a bit of the UI that, that exists from on foundation and apply that to, to my Zora protocol rebuild. So this is a beautiful site. It's got beautiful NFTs here. Uh, you can see the images, you can see some of the, the video flicker here as well. And I just think they did a really good job of rendering this on the screen. And I go, I go through all this uh, because that is the ramp up of what I've been working on. But what I really wanna focus on is how to add Tailwind to a Next.js project. So let's just jump in. So I've got my server running here. Uh, we've got to compile. We do have an error message, so maybe we'll have to look at that later. But uh, I do, I can confirm that this is actually rendering on the page. Uh, so in order to get Tailwind installed, uh, we can go to the Tailwind documentation. Grab that Tailwind documentation. And the way to get started with Tailwind, uh, the quickest possible is actually just go ahead and copy paste this command to install these three libraries. So uh, Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer, those will all be need needed to get Tailwind running. And I'll explain them what the three of them are. So Tailwind CSS is gonna get give us a design system to leverage without us needing to hand write any CSS. Post CSS is gonna give us some latest and greatest, um, sort of like the way Babel uh, gives us the latest and greatest for JavaScript. Uh, Post CSS did that for CSS. Uh, and then we also have Auto Prefixer, which that kind of helps CSS work in multiple browsers and make sure that things like Post CSS or all the latest and greatest features are auto prefix. Um, particularly with things like Opera and, and Safari, they treat things differently. So I'm gonna install this into my dev dependencies and uh, I'll let that run. And then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna actually walk into uh, this command. Uh, and this command is actually gonna initialize a lot of our uh, Tailwind files. Now, I didn't actually talk about Tailwind in great detail, but I do wanna point out that the Foundation app is using, I don't know if they're using Tailwind directly, uh, but the nice thing about Tailwinds 
is that it actually gives you a design system to build these elements rather quickly. So when I say these elements, I'm not talking about the actual images. I'm talking about the hover cards in this, uh, as well as the black bars with the, the, not so much the timer, but how things are rendered on the screen with the circle icons and stuff like that. So now that I have Tailwinds installed, the next thing I need to do is actually do Tailwind CSS and Knit P. And what that's gonna do is gonna generate a couple different files for us. One's gonna be a Tailwind config file. The other one's gonna be a post CSS config file. We can take a look at that real quick. So Tailwind config file is gonna give us a couple different things. The one thing that we do need to, to point out is the purge. So if we have any changes in CSS, uh, this will actually help with the hot reloading. Uh, inside the Tailwind documentation actually gives us a recommendation of what we should put there. And since we have JavaScript files and we have all our stuff nested in components, uh, we can actually make sure that this hot reloads using that. All right, so I'm just gonna copy and paste directly from the documentation and make sure that works. The other thing I'm gonna talk about is the, uh, the post CSS file. Uh, config. So this isn't do anything, but if we wanted to set up some global variables or if we wanted to set up some global auto prefix, uh, perhaps we're using different browsers, we have some sort of interactions, maybe we're using WebAssembly or something interesting, uh, we could actually edit that with plugins inside of PostCSS as well. So PostCSS, as I mentioned, gives us some extra features in the browsers and it is also supported through plugins. So we're not gonna touch that that file. Uh, it was generated for us, but we're gonna, gonna skip to the next thing, which is go into our CSS file and add our styles. So because uh, I do have some global styles, um, actually, because I'm actually not really using any global styles. So I could actually skip down and import Tailwind CSS directly from Tailwind CSS in my app.js. So if I go back into my app.js, uh, I will see that now, instead of the global CSS, and now that we have Tailwinds installed, we'll need to actually run this, restart the server so that we can see our configurations to actually see those get updated. And then if I go back into my local host and hit refresh, now that I have a new browser coming. So there we go, we see the fonts are slightly different. Uh, we can also see that things are slightly pushed in and centered a bit. And this is all built in the CSS logic. So, and that's actually not even it. To start enabling the power of the Tailwinds is actually through the CSS class names. And to show this off, uh, the best way I could show this off is actually by showing it in my code uh, using this example, which is my style tag. So here you can see I'm actually rendering and, and using my zero auto width. Uh, I wanna actually mirror more of what the foundation app is doing. And as mentioned, the power of Tailwinds is really hidden behind these class names. I don't know these, I don't commit a lot of these class names to memory. Uh, what I usually do is actually uh, build a lot of similar sites. Uh, so, so things like the foundation app, I did rebuild the foundation app in a whole other project from, from scratch. Uh, you can actually check, check it out on my GitHub repo if you're interested. Um, but I'm just gonna recopy and paste uh, some logic from that. And two initial diffs, one to, max the width of my entire project. And the second div is going to apply a grid system. So that way each element will actually be aligned inside of a grid. And that one more thing that I'm gonna add is gonna be a card component. So now this card component is going to take a couple different props, which would be title and description. Uh, but what I'm trying to do is I want to mimic the cards on the foundation app. So you can see how these cards are now Instead of taking up the uh, a third of the screen, it's now only taking a quarter of the screen or less than a quarter of the screen. And they're also rendering in their perspective rows too as well. So for me to make that work, I've created this car component. All right, so to simplify this, I've actually, I'm only gonna be rendering uh, image tags. And the other thing I'm gonna be doing, instead of actually rendering an image source, I'm gonna leverage next image. Now, if you're familiar, familiar with next image, next image is a built-in feature within Next.js and provide you some built-in optimizations. So what I'm gonna do is actually swap that out to be an image tag instead of an image source. Uh, the other thing I can also do is take that image tag and add um, rounded quarters to the images. Sorry, with the next image, we're gonna to need to add a couple other props 
Uh, and those props are going to be the following. I'm going to have a source tag, which is going to be the content URI. It's, whatever, it's already what I've been using. I did add an alt tag because I didn't have one prior. I've also created a width and a height. Uh, this is also needed because we need to know how big the image should be. Uh, and I also passed in a quality size for uh, based on percentage. And this is specifically because a lot of these NFTs, um, they're actually generated very large images, like some I've seen up to five megabytes. And that is, that's a lot of content to be rendering on the page. So I'll, I'll talk about caching in a future video, but what I just point out that I, I just added that in case I can sort of save on some, um, some quality of the, what's being generated. Cause we don't only need full high definition NFTs rendered on our, at least in my app. All right, so the other thing I want to point out too as well, if you go into the next config, which I haven't actually talked about yet, next config is gives us some other features similar to how Tailwind um, post CSS, we can add in plugins. Uh, the one thing I did want to add is the fact that I added a image tag to it. The way the next image does the optimizations for the images is that we need to pass in uh, allow listed domains. So I've added IPF, IPFS.io and fleek.co, uh, two URLs that we can host NFT images on, uh, IPFS, IPFS that fleek.io also is another one that comes up. Uh, and I've added a couple other ones that I see come through as well. Uh, there are some images that are hosted in NFTs that you leverage those as well. So uh, we've got that out of the way. We've got our images now loading on the screen. Uh, and for the most part, nothing changes. Everything still gets rendered just as we thought it would be. So because that works now, uh, I, what I wanna do is now focus on adding a card. Now, since we already have the card available to us, uh, I can go ahead and type in card because we've imported that earlier, as mentioned. And then the other thing that we need to do is we need to add a title, uh, a description, and I think that should be it because it, the, the children itself will be everything that's wrapped within the card. All right, so, uh, but I also need to add the title, which will be token.meta.name, some of our alt tags. I can add description, token.meta. Uh, and as a reminder, I didn't actually slow down and show this, but the, the fact that we're actually grabbing the metadata, uh, we're actually setting that as token.meta. So everything that comes back in the JSON, it will meta.name, meta.description, meta.mime type. All that stuff is, or meta that body rather, all that stuff is going to be generated and available to us to, uh, since we're returning that. All right, so now we have title description. The other thing we should probably add is a key, which we should, uh, I realized that we can't use the actual meta name for the key. So instead, we know that the token.content URI is going to be just as unique. Uh, so we can leverage that as the key. We'll need to actually run this restart the server so that we can see our configurations. And there we have it. We've got Tailwind's actually uh, rendering a very similar UI to Foundation, but using Zora Protocol data. Now, before I end the video, I just want to point out that real quick, there are some issues in rendering these large images from IPFS. And I mentioned in passing, some of the largest images were a five to eight megabytes, which is quite hefty uh, to be able to rendering on the screen. So, so things like Next Image did help optimize these images but I still needed to reach for the cloud for IPF CDN. Now, the assumption is IPFS is already built in as a CDN because it's a decentralized network, but I would not lean too heavily on that assumption because IPFS does have some downfalls. And those downfalls I'm gonna talk about in the next videos.